I want to go over some stuff that's on the test that I know at least G period didn't um, probably get a full enough explanation of. So I want to make sure that you understand the lab and um, can answer the questions on the test. So this is what our lab looked like. Um, we got initial weights of all of the potatoes in all the different cups, and then we poured in just tap water or 0.1 molar sucrose. So some sugar, 0.2 molar, 0.3 molar, 0.4, 0.5, 0.6. So this one uh, had a whole lot of sugar, and this one not a whole lot of sugar. So we did the initial mass, and then we put them in these beakers, um, and then we got the final mass the next day, and then we calculated the percent difference. So here's what we actually found. This was the molarity of the um, sugar, so I guess we'll put a sugar concentration maybe. And the units are going to be moles, uh, moles per liter. So 0 0.1234567. All right, so we have all these numbers. I should have zeros in front of these, I guess. All right, and then we calculated the percent difference. So how much did the potato, how much mass did the potato gain or how much mass did the potato lose? So right here, if any uh, dots ended up on this line, it would mean that zero, they didn't gain or lose any, any mass at all. So for this one, this is pure tap water. And I want you to picture, pure tap water is all water, right? 100% water. But a potato is a living thing and it's got some dissolved stuff in it. So I'm gonna draw a few dissolved materials in each of them. So water tends to go from an area of high water concentration to an area of low water concentration. So it goes in. And so we're going to say water moves from high to low water concentration. because there's all water here, but in here there's some sugar and other stuff, so that means there's less room for water. Another way to say it is water goes from low solute to high solute, or water follows solute. Another way to say it would be that water moves from high water potential to low water potential. Whoops. So water potential takes into account both the solute potential, which involves the concentration, right, which is what we kind of talked about with this part, plus also the pressure potential. So what it means is water is going to keep going into that potato until so much pressure builds up that the water stops moving. So if it were only moving because of solute, it would go in until the whole thing burst, even with cell walls, right? Um, but cell walls are strong enough and pressure builds up and, and it stops. So it's the movement of water depends not just on where the solutes are, but also on how much pressure is building up. So this one is actually a more accurate statement, a more complete statement, really, um, than this one. Okay, so we found that at zero molar, we had a whole lot of water going into that potato, maybe 15, 20%, something up here. And then at 0.1 molar, what we've got now here is maybe a little bit of dissolved stuff out here. So you still have a higher concentration of water here compared to inside, but it's not as dramatic as it was over here. So water's gonna go in, but not at quite the same level. So maybe it only gained like 10% or something. And then at 0.2, we're also gonna have a little bit going in um, but not a ton, so maybe at 0 0.2 we just gained a little bit of mass. And then maybe at 0 0.3, let's say this had um, no net gain and no net loss. Let's say water um, went in and water went out, so it was it was um, a net flow of zero. That means it didn't gain, gain mass or lose mass, didn't gain or lose water. So let's say that was right on the line for us. And so like if we weighed this as being 2.9 grams before, we would also see it were 2.9 grams after. Um, so what you might notice for all of these is that water went in. So these are all hypotonic solutions, and they're all making the cells turgid, this one especially, right? So this one gets very turgid. But the solutions are hypotonic solutions. 
So I guess you could say the potatoes were hypertonic, but usually we talk about the solutions. So the solutions are hypotonic. You can also say that the water potential is higher out here than it is in here because water moves from areas of high water potential to areas of low water potential. So you've got a high water potential here. And then inside the potato, you must have a low water potential, right? So water, let's do it kind of like this. There's dissolved stuff in this potato. I have it standing up tall, which is kind of funny. But water goes from high water potential to in here, which is going to be lower water potential. So water's going to go inside like that. OK, so what we found over here is that these solutions were, can you see that? Sorry. These solutions are hypertonic because there were so many dissolved particles, so much sugar in these especially this one. It actually took a long time to get the sugar to dissolve into this one. It was a pain to make. So what happens is even, um, even for this one, there's actually a higher concentration of water in here because there's just so much solute out here. So the water goes out and it loses mass over that day. So it loses a little bit of mass. This one, even more exaggerated, pretend I drew more dots in here, I guess. So water, comes out even more, so it lost, you know, maybe 10% of its mass, and when this one, just a ton of water left, maybe it lost 20% of its mass or something like that. So we got a diagram kind of like this, um, and here's my line of best fit. Okay, that's a lousy line, but we're going to pretend it's a good line. Um, I thought maybe I'd try to get it through here, but whatever. So anyway, here, let's say that's 0 0.26. So that's what I'm going to call isotonic. So that's the air. It's, it's pretty close to 0.3. Um, maybe my line of best fit should have gone a little bit more like that. But anyway, go with me with this for now. So something pretty close to 0.3 is going to be iso, whoops, sorry, isotonic, meaning the potato right there isn't gaining or losing any um, mass. And the potato would be flaccid two C's, I think it's two C's, um, meaning it's not, uh, you know, it's kind of floppy, whereas the potatoes over here would be plasmalized. Okay, and so the stuff that I'm not sure that we went over with period G, with water potential, is that it's going to be both the pressure potential and the solute potential, like I mentioned a little bit ago. So water's going to go from high to low water potential. The solute potential, the formula for it is negative I CRT. So the temperature is positive because it's in Kelvin. That's just a number 0.0831 from your formula sheet. That's a number one or two for us. And then that's the concentration. So if the concentration is zero, if concentration equals zero, then your solute potential equals zero. If the concentration is anything else, 0.1 molar, 0.2 molar, 0. whatever else, your solute potential is going to be a negative number. Your pressure potential can be zero, and it can be negative, and it can be positive. If a cell is turgid, so meaning waters come into the cell, then it'll be a positive pressure. If it's flaccid, or if it's um, a container, at just an open container, it will be zero. And if it's like xylem or um, some other like unusual thing, um, but xylem's not unusual, but if it's xylem, which are those little tiny tubes, in a plant um, that water goes through, it's almost like they're being like sucked through and you end up getting a negative uh, pressure potential. So um, what's going on right here is that because it's isotonic and flaccid, the pressure is zero. So that means the water potential equals the solid potential. And so we're going to end up with um, some negative number there. So I'm going to just do the calculation for this. So the water potential equals zero plus whatever this is. So negative I is negative one because it's sugar times 0.26 um, moles per liter times uh, R, which is 0 0.0831 liter bar per mole Kelvin. 
And then the temperature in the room, I think the temperature in the room the other day was 23 degrees. So plus 273 because it's Kelvin. Uh, 789, sorry, 296. So that's 296K. And so what I can do oops, is um, cross out some units here. So the liters are on the bottom and the top. So they go, the Kelvin goes, and then I've got moles and moles. All I have left is bars. So that's gonna give me some um, negative number. And I'll let you guys do that calculation. But I just wanted to make sure you understood what was done in the lab because there is a question, um, a series of questions on the test about an example just like this. And so you're gonna wanna look at, um, you know, if they give you different osmolarities, you just have to see who gains weight because they're in a hypotonic solution or who, which ones lose weight because they're in a hypertonic solution, right? Um, the ones in a hypotonic solution will become turgid because they're gaining mass, right? They're, they've increased in their mass. And the ones in the hypoton hypertonic solution became plasmalized. Hypo, let me just finish writing it for you, hypotonic solution versus hypertonic solution. All right, if you know that, I think you'll be okay on the series of questions um, that come up on the lab, um, that come up on the test about the lab. All right, bye.